This is a wolf, a canine species with advanced intelligence and a cute fuzzy face. This is a werewolf, a monstrous creature with canine and humanoid features that devours the living. Both wolves and tales of werewolves have been with us for thousands of years. But what is a werewolf? Where do they come from? Why have humans been so fascinated with them since ancient times? Let's find out. Werewolves. What's the first thing you think of when you hear that word? Chances are you think of a man who changes into a hideous beast during the full moon. It has a big mouth full of dangerous teeth, doggy ears on its head, maybe even a tail. It's probably quite muscular, and it's definitely hairy like it's covered in hair. Well, werewolves are a guaranteed hit at the movies. Just look at the Underworld series that features a never-ending war between vampires and werewolves. The werewolves, of course, are the underdogs. American Werewolf in Paris and American Werewolf in London are two thrillers that raked in millions. And don't forget comedies such as Teen Wolf. But how accurate are these depictions of werewolves? Just so happens that I've been studying a subject for the book I'm writing. Yes, it features a werewolf. However, I wanted to get beyond the pop culture depiction of these monsters and take a deep dive into the mythology behind them. I want my book to be as accurate as possible. Oh boy, was I in for a surprise. You see, spoiler alert, there's no such thing as a nice werewolf. Sorry, Michael J. Fox. Did you know that werewolves are a uniquely European myth? The monsters that we picture today are a result of the witch-burning trials during the late medieval ages. However, the first obsession with people turning into wolves dates back much further than that. If we go all the way back to ancient Mesopotamia, one of the first civilizations in human history, we got our first glimpse of a man becoming a wolf. In the Epic of Gilgamesh, our hero Gilgamesh jilts a woman when he learns that she's in the habit of turning her lovers into wolves. Of course, these are literal, actual wolves, not half-man, half-wolf, werewolf kind of wolves. Later, we see the Greeks with the same kind of tale. In the legend of Lycaon, I think I pronounced that right, Zeus turns Lycaon and all his sons into wolves. Once again, these are actual wolves, paws and all. This theme of people becoming real wolves continues into the Dark Ages. There's a famous Viking tale called the Saga of the Volsungs. In this story, a father and son are hunting in the woods when they find a stack of wolf pelts. They put the wolf pelts on and instantly turn into wolves for ten days. Only a friendly raven is able to remove the curse. All of these ancient tales have a couple of things in common. For starters, the people are turned into real-life, full-on wolves, not monsters. Secondly, the people in them are victims. Becoming a wolf is a type of punishment. And finally, all of them were changed into wolves by the outside supernatural forces, whether it was a witch, or a god, or a stack of cursed blankies. The werewolves we know today first appeared in medieval folklore. In fact, people believed in them so much that there were even laws against them. Church ordinances, for example, directed priests on how to prevent werewolves from biting too many of their parishioners. Monks even drew maps of Europe, and Britain especially, indicating werewolf hotspots. It seems that the modern idea of the werewolf monster appeared somewhere during this period, especially the witch-burning period of the late medieval ages. This may be a result of the supernatural hysteria of the time. There were also several serial killers roaming France, Spain, and Germany at that time. As the victims' bodies stacked up, tales of werewolves in those same areas grew. By the early 16th century, men accused of being werewolves were being burned alongside women accused of witchcraft. Tales abounded of enormous wolfmen that transformed in the light of the full moon and roamed the night eating innocent victims. This phenomenon of the werewolf is found across the European continent, from Ireland to Russia and as far south as Turkey. While Asia had tales of tiger men, they weren't on the same horrifying level as werewolves, and they were often seen as heroes. Europe had no rival in tales of pure, blood-curdling horror. Medieval Europe was obsessed with gore. It was during the late Victorian and Edwardian ages that werewolves became part of pop culture. 
Clemens Hausmann wrote The Werewolf, which was as popular a book as Bram Stoker's Dracula and came out at the same time. Bram Stoker himself wrote about werewolves in his hit follow-up book, Dracula's Guest. Then, during the 1930s and 40s, werewolves hit the silver screen. The Werewolf of London was the first werewolf film, and it's from this movie that we get the idea of werewolves being basically impervious to anything but silver bullets. The Nazis seized upon the idea of werewolves as part of their symbology. Hitler's headquarters was codenamed Werewolf, and special German commando units were called werewolves. After thousands of years, werewolves remain a part of pop culture today. The medieval European image of werewolves has spread around the world, with werewolf films and comics appearing in every culture. From innocent people turning into actual wolves, to serial killer cannibals that hunt in the full moon, tales of werewolves have been with us since the beginning of civilization. My upcoming novel mixes werewolves with the 1920s rise of the Nazis. To learn more, sign up for my free newsletter, The Dresher Drop. The link is in the video description. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and follow. Thanks for watching.